been informed that the National Guard has finally arrived at New York, London, Washington, Shanghai, Florida, in fact, half of all cities in the world will be underwater already this century. At current rates of climate change, the Earth will be four degrees hotter before this century is through, leaving the planet completely without ice for the first time in 40 million years. Sea levels will be 25 meters higher as agriculture collapses. There will be mass starvation. In fact, within decades, the world's already set for an irreversible tipping point where ice sheet disintegration starts accelerating out of our control. The effects are plain today with record floods, hurricanes, drought has already become a permanent feature of Australasia, vast swathes of Africa and the Middle East and the American Southwest. Your government, notes the world's preeminent climate scientist, James Hansen, is lying to you through their teeth. Obama, in his speeches, regularly talks about his green credentials. In fact, notes the author of an upcoming keynote book called To Save the Planet, Turn the World Upside Down. Obama's pursuing policies to squeeze every last drop of fossil fuel, including tar sands, coal and mountain top removal by, quote, whatever means necessary and regardless of environmental damage. Huge tax breaks he gave fracking companies are a key reason the highly complicated procedure is financially viable. Green initiatives touted by government that make us feel good about ourselves, notes truth out, are either useless or even more catastrophic than what they replace. While fracking giants assure us natural gas is a clean, safe alternative energy, numerous studies from NASA and Stanford University found vast methane emissions from wells make fracking actually, quote, the worst possible fuel for global warming, and even worse than coal. So the hypothesis here is shale gas is better for global warming than other fossil fuels, and it's a good transitional fuel. And so we, we tested that, and the answer is, well, no, it's not. It's somewhere between uh, 3.6 and 7.9 percent of the total amount of gas produced over a lifetime of a well is emitted to the atmosphere as methane. There's continual leakage at the wellhead. There's uh, leakage from the storage and processing facilities, purposeful venting, also accidental leaks. You throw it into the pipeline system. If you believe that we might be approaching a tipping point over the next couple of decades, then you need to be really careful about pumping methane, that's such a potent greenhouse gas in this short time frame, in, into the atmosphere. Guilt-ridden initiatives like replanting rainforests and pollution tax credits always get diluted by those who control the economy to the point where they're actually now big subsidies for polluters. All these measures, notes James Hansen, are laughable drops in the ocean in any case. We actually require astonishingly sharp cuts right now. Experts agree we need a 50% drop in CO2 emissions within six years. By 2050, 90% to avoid the destruction of the planet. Given current corporate practices, not one wildlife preserve, wilderness or indigenous culture will survive the global market economy. The capitalist market system is inherently eco-suicidal. There is no polite way to say that business is destroying the world. Author Richard Smith notes it no longer matters what your politics are or whether you like capitalism or not. Quote, the current American way of life is simply not viable. Richard joins us. Great to see you. So what choice do we have? The public doesn't yet appreciate the dangers we face um, in the not distant future, but right now. Most people don't really want to know because the implications are too terrible, large corporations. They just can't find it in their interest to, to act on the, on the, uh, in the interests of the common good. So we have, to, we have to nationalize, socialize the whole economy, take them over and run them ourselves. It's either that or they'll just drive us off the cliff to collapse. Practically every job in the US today, in one way or another, depends on fossil fuel extraction that cannot be greened in any meaningful way. 
Smith argues whatever your political views, only a new truly socialist government could reassign all those coal miners and auto workers and gas frackers to non-destructive jobs, as corporations can't be expected to vote themselves out of existence. The US consumes so much more than anyone else and economically and militarily dictates their model to the rest of the world. So Americans' decision to keep or change their system may kill or save this planet. Seek truth from facts. This is The Truth Seeker.